If you clicked on this video, you've likely either heard of ChatGPT or you're curious about the app that had 100 million people visit its site in January alone. It took TikTok nine months to reach this feat and Instagram over two years. ChatGPT did it just two months after it was launched, making it the fastest growing consumer app in history. Today, we're going to cover a few major questions that you may have. What is ChatGPT? How is it different? And why has it amassed the incredible amount of users it has in such a short period of time. If you're new here, I'm Claudia. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoy this video or find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've used ChatGPT, what your experience with it has been, or just what you think of generative AI as a whole. So let's get started. Starting with the big overarching question, what is ChatGPT? And what does it do? I thought it only fitting to take to chat GPT and ask it this exact question and share its answer with you. So here's what it had to say. ChatGPT is a computer program that can generate text that is similar to human writing. It was created by OpenAI and it uses artificial intelligence to understand and respond to questions or prompts. ChatGPT is trained on a huge amount of text data and can produce answers that are understandable, relevant, and often clever. It can be used for things like creating chatbots, generating articles, or helping with research. To take this even further, it can actually do more than just generate text, write poems, essays, and scripts for you based on a simple prompt. It can also adjust its answers and responses based on your communication with it. So for example, when I originally asked ChatGPT what it is, the answer it gave used phrases like massive corpus of text data and long range dependencies. So because of that, I asked it to explain the concept again this time in a more simple way. And that's when it shared the answer that I provided to you just a minute ago. So not only can it provide information, it can also make adjustments to the information and language it uses based on your prompts and responses. On top of that, for all of my grammar police officers out there, CNBC interviewed a linguist about the app and she said it's incredibly accurate and actually better than the writing she's gotten from most students over decades of teaching as far as things like grammar, spelling, and punctuation go. Now your next question may be why this has garnered so much attention. I mean, we had asked Jeeves already, did we not? So how is this different than other AIs and chatbots that we've seen before? While artificial intelligence isn't a new concept, ChatGPT is different because this is generative AI, and what does that even mean? Previously, artificial intelligence has just collected existing data and content that's already in the internet sphere and presented that information to you. ChatGPT differs by gathering all the existing information that's already on the web and using it to create new content. Never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. So for example, think of a search engine like Google. If you ask Google a question like, how do I bake a cake? It's going to gather all the information and resources already on the web to show you how to make a cake, but through other channels like blogs, websites, or YouTube videos. Generative AI like ChatGPT has the ability to create something new. So if we ask it how to make a cake, it's going to give us a recipe, ingredients, and instructions on how to do it that it has generated itself, which is pretty incredible. I'm actually going to be testing out some recipes that ChatGPT provides me in some upcoming videos. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. It should be really fun. So now that you're hopefully more clear on what it does and how it's different than search engines or other artificial intelligence, I want to talk about why it has become so incredibly popular and has amassed such a huge user base in such a short period of time. In fact, when I first tried to use it, I got a message that they were currently at capacity and I wasn't even able to try it out. So you might even get that message if you try to use it, but as it gains more popularity, they are expanding their bandwidth. So hopefully that isn't as much of an issue moving forward. OpenAI, which is the company that created ChatGPT, was founded in 2015 and one of its co-founders was Elon Musk. Now he's no longer part of the company. He resigned in 2018 because of potential conflicts of interest with Tesla's AI. And even though this program has really only been booming as far as popularity goes within the past few months, Microsoft invested $1 billion in the venture four years ago to help further development. And they also recently announced a multi-year 
multi-billion dollar investment to continue to help open AI with development and to further attempts to make Bing an actual competitor of Google, I would assume. So obviously a massive company like Microsoft having a huge stake in a company is going to get the attention of everyone in Silicon Valley. And given Microsoft's role in revolutionizing the tech industry, if they're pouring billions of dollars into development of a product, everyone, regardless if you're interested in tech or not, is going to have to pay attention because inevitably it's going to come into your life in one way or another, whether you know it or not. It's not just an application for people to find recipes or shortcut their school papers. It's the start of something that businesses could incorporate moving forward once it's more widely available. One example could be if you need to translate a web page into a different language, you could put the copy into the chat and have it instantly translate it for you. And this could save hours and hours of someone manually translating copy. And that's just one example of how it could be used moving forward. According to the Microsoft website, this page on the CarMax website contains several sections of AI generated text. So even if it's not something that you would be using in your everyday life, you're likely going to come into contact with it without even knowing it. And maybe you already have if you've been looking into buying a used 2018 Kia Sorento. The current CEO of OpenAI explained the future of this app best on Twitter, saying that this is a preview of progress. It's going to take years and years for this to become industry standard. Think of the iPhone 1 versus the current model today, the iPhone 14, and all the capabilities the current model has versus the original. This is really just the beginning, and like most tech products, there are some kinks to work out in the beginning. One of the biggest issues that ChatGPT is currently facing is misinformation and accuracy issues. As I mentioned before, it's pulling information that's already on the internet to generate its responses. So if the information it's pulling from is wrong, like for example, if there's something wrong on a Wikipedia page, then the response it's going to give you could be incorrect as well. Another issue being presented is how schools are handling the application. How are teachers and educators supposed to know if a paper handed in was written by a student or by ChatGPT? And since it's all newly generated content, there really isn't a way to run it through plagiarism software like teachers have been able to do in the past. So yes, there are some great features that you can currently use and great potential for widespread use of this product, but there are also plenty of areas for improvement. Luckily, I'm sure the billions of dollars provided by Microsoft will allow those improvements to be made. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.